I thank God for the privilege to be here tonight. I thank God for what he's doing here in this church, not only in this church, but around the world. And sometimes we don't think that uh, we kind of like get closed up in our own little shell, and uh, we feel like, well, God ain't really doing nothing. We don't see a whole lot happening. But if you look around, God is moving. He's moving in a great and a miraculous way because Jesus will soon to return. And I believe that he's trying to draw every soul that he can to a place of repentance. I believe he's trying to draw the church to a place of renewing in the spirit. Come on. Get man to God that we can get closer to God that we can be ready when he comes. I believe he's coming back not for those that are asleep. I think he's coming back for those that are wide awake. I think he's coming back for those that are watching and waiting for his return. I believe he's waiting, he's waiting for those that say, Lord, even come quickly. You know, He's looking for a church that's ready. And I believe he wants to get you and me into the place where we need to be. He knows I said, me as well. Man, I need to be there. I want to be there because I don't want to miss it. I want to come into the relationship with Jesus that he wants me to come into. And I can be prepared when he comes that I can go with him. Amen. I love the Lord tonight. I failed him many times. Uh, but I still love him. Amen. And I want to go on. I want to make it. I want to do what he wants me to do. It's good to be here. I want to share some word with you tonight. That I feel like the Lord has allowed me to, to give to you. I've said this many, many times when I preach. You know, I'm not no big, deep, uh, mysterious preacher. Uh, I'm not going to read you something tonight you're not familiar with. Probably not going to say nothing that you've not never heard before. I think you've probably heard it, but I believe sometimes we need to be stirred up. Amen. And we need to be uh, uh, reevaluate the things that we know, the things that we've heard. We need to take note of it. And I believe we need to be reminded sometimes. You know, Amen. we get forgetful lots of times of Amen. things. And we kind of like you know, just forget, you know, what we used to have. Come on. Amen. Come on. Amen. Come on. You hear that, man? Come on. We forget what we used to have. Amen. Because we don't have it any longer. Right. We kind of laid it on the shelf. Yes. And God wants to stir it up and He wants it to be renewed into our spirit. And the only way we can really do that is to really realize what we have. Yes. Amen. If you got your Bible tonight and you want to read along with me, I'm going to read you a very familiar passage of Scripture found in the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 1. We was talking today when we come in, Bobby said about the hay still being here from, we had it decorated for Christmas and the Christmas play and stuff. And I said, well, I said, it's still a little Christmas. Amen. So I'm going to preach to you a little bit tonight about a little bit of Christmas. Bobby has probably preached several messages here during the Christmas holidays and seasons and stuff, but uh, uh, I feel like this is what the Lord shared with me to give you tonight. How many got Christmas presents? Yes. Yes. Man, just about everybody got a Christmas present. Yes. How many had to take someone from by? There you go. <laughs> they didn't fit right. They didn't look right. It wasn't the right thing. Or for some reason or the other, you know, we had to take them by. There's, there's been a time of giving through the Christmas holidays. And I want us tonight to look at something that God has given us. We need to really realize, you know, what God has given us. Sometimes we can have something that is very valuable and we don't realize it. You know, every, every so often you'll hear something on the, the newspaper or on TV or something about somebody that had something for so long or they bought a house and they found a painting or this or that and they never realized they had it and it was so valuable. Yeah. Well, until they found out what they had, it was useless to them. Yeah. It was no good at all. And you know, that's the way it is with you and I tonight as Christians in, in serving the Lord. Sometimes we don't really know the value of something that we have. And until we really begin to come into the revelation knowledge of the value of what we possess, it's really not that useful to us. It don't come to us full of value to what we can get out of it. But I want to preach to you a little bit tonight. I'll try not to hold you real long. I know Brother Bobby don't preach but about an hour and a half when he preached, so I won't go no longer when he goes. I'll only preach to what you're accustomed to hear. Matthew chapter 1, if you will, and begin reading with verse 18. 
Read your little Christmas story. He says, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When as his mother Mary was his spouse to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from the sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not until she had brought forth her first son, and he called his name Jesus. Would you bow your head in prayer with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight, God, for your word. We thank you for the precious son, Father, that you sent us. Lord, I pray tonight, God, that you'd help us receive your word. Help me tonight, God, that I'd speak the things that you'd want me to speak. I pray that the anointing of the Holy Ghost would fall upon my life tonight, Father. And Lord, that you'd use me for your glory. I pray that the hearts and the ears of your people would be open. Be able to receive the things, God, that you have to give. Lord, move and minister by your Holy Spirit into the hearts and the lives of your people tonight. And God, if there should be one here tonight that's lost and don't know Jesus as their Savior, I pray that the convicting power of the Holy Ghost will fall upon to them tonight. And Lord, they repent and give their heart to you. And we'll give you praise and glory for all that you're going to continue to do in the disservice. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. I ask you a question. How many received the Christmas present? Yeah. Most everybody in the house raised their hand. Big majority of them raised their hand that you have to take some of those things back because they wasn't just right. Some of you got some good gifts probably. Some received some very costly gifts. Some maybe not so costly. But regardless of, of the cost of it to you, it was something that was good. It was showing appreciation that somebody thought something of you to give you a gift regardless of how small it might be. And you received it that way. And I thank God for gifts that is given around Christmas time during the Christmas season. But a lot of those gifts when you got them, you probably looked at them and said, well, this is me. I usually look at something and I think, well, is it worthwhile keeping? I wonder how much did it cost? Things like that. Well, I've learned over the time that the way you evaluate something that you receive, usually there's about three methods. One, you look at the name. And if it's got the right name onto it, you know it costs it a pretty good little bit. Secondly, you look at the quality of it. What type of material, what it's made out of, you know, its makeup. And you look at the rarity of it, the quantity of it. How many has been made? You know, and, and I'm not a lot in antiques or valuable things and stuff like that, but I've kind of learned that a little bit about it. I'll tell you a little story. When I was a little boy, I always heard about a 1943 penny, copper penny. How many ever heard about a 1943 copper penny? When I was little, I always heard about Daddy and different older men saying about a 1943 penny, that if you found one, you know, it was very valuable, it would be worth a whole lot of money. I know there was other rare pieces back then. There was gold coins and stuff, but as a little boy, I never did imagine about, you know, thinking about getting a gold coin. But I did have imagination, Brother Bobby, about getting a penny because pennies would pass through my hands as a little boy. And I looked for years for a 1943 penny. And finally, I just kind of put it out of my mind. And one day, we was up in Pennsylvania, and I was out working one day. I used to drop some coins into the side door of my, of my, of my truck, and I got out, and I got back in, and when I slammed the door, a penny fell out on the floorboard. 
I reached down and I picked up the penny and I always save wheat pennies. I picked it up and I seen it was a wheat penny. So instead of putting it back into the coin, I was going to put it in my pocket instead of putting it into the, where the rest of the coins was there. But when I turned it over on the face of it, I saw the date. And after all these years, I looked at a penny, Brother Bobby, and it said, 1943. I made my heart, I'm not lying to you, my heart began to flutter, and then I almost felt like I was going to stop. It was like, is this really real? And I came back home with it. I told some couple of boys what I had. I found this penny. Some of them didn't know nothing about it. A couple of them did. He said, what are you going to do with it? I said, I'm going to keep it. I said, I don't know what it's worth, but I'm going to keep it. I was anxious to find out what it was worth. So I started looking. I went down and got a coin book. And I started looking. Well, in reading the coin book and stuff, it said in 1943, there was only six copper pennies that was made. And the reason they was made because they stopped making them. But because of the war during that time, they were trying to save all the copper, you know, for the bullets and stuff that they needed for the, for the army, for the war that was going on. But in the mint, there was enough copper left that when they started it up, the print six pennies. There's only six in the world. But it said during that time there was a lot of counterfeits. People took the 1943 steel penny that they start producing and later they started dipping them in copper to try to pass them off for the 1943 copper penny. And I said, oh Lord. You're right. It wasn't real. And the simple way to find out that it wasn't real, so simple, and I wasn't smart enough to even realize it, to even know that they was doing this thing, was just take a magnet, didn't take a genius, you know, didn't take a real coin collector to know, just take a magnet, stick it to it, bang oh, it hopped up to the magnet. Oh. And now my heart goes <laughs> back down like this. There's a lot of things in life that we sometimes consider that's going to be so valuable, but sometimes we get a counterfeit. Yeah. Well, I'd like to tell you something tonight. This one gift that I'm going to talk about tonight is not counterfeit. Yeah. Hallelujah. It's not counterfeit, and it is a priceless gift that's been given to mankind. Whenever God said he was going to give his son, he was going to give something that we could look at and we could see that the name was there, the right name was tied on to him as the son of God. Amen. Amen. We could see that the quality was there and the quantity was there because there's only one. There's no more. There's only one Jesus. Hallelujah. See, maybe some people have the name, but there's only one. And we can rest assured tonight that we have the most valuable possession that heaven had to offer. God wants us to be conscious of the value and the benefits of the gift that God's given us through his precious son. And we as children of God, we need to come into that, that consciousness of knowing what we really possess as having Jesus in our life. Sometimes, you know, we take it for granted. Sometimes it's like, you know, well, we've had him for so long, he's just a friend, and he's there. And we kind of like feel like that sometimes, but he's more than just a friend. He's more than just a friend. He's a savior. He's a deliverer. He's someone that's there for us whenever we need him. Isaiah chapter 9 of verse 6 says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. Yes. I want us to realize the value and the preciousness that there is in the son that was given. I've told this story before. Most all of you know my daughter Tawana. She couldn't have any children. So finally, there came an opportunity for her to receive one from a young girl who was going to give birth to one and didn't want it. And we made a trip to where this place was at. And we got there, and about two or three days later, the young girl had went into labor, took her to the hospital. While she was in there, the baby was born, and the mother never even got to see it. 
But Wanda was going in as the mother, and whenever she went in, and they handed her the baby. We were sitting into a room waiting. And when she walked out with that baby into her arms, and brought him into us, I saw my girl happy over a lot of things into her life. But when she walked in, I saw an expression on her face because the little precious son was laid into her arms that I'd never seen before and I haven't seen yet for the Bobby. It was such a precious feeling that she had and the joy that filled her soul of knowing of the precious gift that she had. But church, listen to me. We got something more precious even than that. This precious is a newborn baby. is to your life and it's given to you when it seemed impossible for you to have one. We have a newborn baby, a child that was given for you and me tonight. We have him into our life as the Son of God. A son was given to us. We need to realize the value that there is in that son tonight. And love him and appreciate him and care for him more than anything else on the face of this earth. Hallelujah. A gift that comes from God. Jesus says this in John 3, 16. He says, for God so loved the world that he gave that he gave his only begotten son. His only begotten, only one, only one that was begotten. He had the spiritual background and he had the natural background because the prophet prophesies a virgin shall bring forth this son Amen. A virgin shall bring forth this son. The only one that's ever been from the beginning of time and never one since. That a virgin was able to bear a son and be able to bear a child without any kind of relationship, without any kind of marriage or anything because it was a gift that God gave. He had the purity into the natural, into the flesh, as well as he had the purity into the spirit from our Heavenly Father. Amen. A pure quality. A child born straight from God, given to us by God. Acts chapter 4 and verse 12. This is what the apostle says. He says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. No other, no one else, no other way to be saved except through Jesus, except through Him. You remember the young rich man that came to Jesus one time? And he said, good master, what good thing can I do to inherit eternal life? You know, there are so many people today that are looking for a thing to do. The Christian anthem in church has got to be popular. Church has got to be popular. Maybe we don't always see the pews filled, but it's got to be popular. You know, everybody you talk to just about will say they go to church. They come to church. I heard some statistics are here a while back. And they asked a question, he took a survey, and he said 90, I think it was 93% of American people believe and say they're going to heaven. Yeah. And he said there's only 47% that actually goes to church. About half of the people who think they're going to heaven, and only half of them even goes to church. It may. But we need to know and realize coming to church don't save us. Amen. Chicken brother Bobby's hand don't save you. Amen. Putting your name on the church roll don't save you. There's only one way. And we have to realize it's not because of our good works and not for the good deeds that we can do. It's not how we help some poor person when they're in distress. But it's only through Jesus. He's the only way. He's the only door that we can go to. And there's no other way. You might say, Simon, I know that. And I'm saved. 
But I want us to be conscious of the value of it. And knowing because He's the only way and there's no other way the values that there is that comes along with that kind of salvation. Amen. The values that we have. I want us to be conscious of it tonight to realize the gift that God has given us and what's contained in that gift tonight. We sometimes fail to realize really what we got. Amen. And we cry all the time, oh me. And all we hear is doom and gloom. And how bad this is going on and how bad this is and what this is happening and that's happening. Well, listen to me. Jesus said He came that we may have life and that we might have it more abundantly. It's the thief that comes to steal, rob, and kill, and destroy. He's the one that's doing the bad things in your life. And you need to acknowledge that and realize Jesus come to give you life and give it to you more abundantly, more enjoyable, that you can enjoy your life and serve Him. God don't want us walking like a dead dried up pruned. God wants to see some joy into our life. He wants to see some happiness in our life. He wants to see some rejoicing in the church. You know, I've seen this before. We pray, Lord, save our loved ones. And yet, the things that we confess in the life that we live before our loved ones would disgust them to want to be a Christian. Amen. Oh, me. All the here is grumbling and complaining. All the here is what we don't have and what we wish we did have. They never hear us come home and talk about how good the church service was. How the Lord blessed us. Amen. How we seen so and so dance up and down the aisles. Oh God. Come on, I'm talking about a valuable gift that God has given us. And we're not even conscious of it to realize the value of it. And we can rejoice over what we got instead of grumbling and complaining. God wants us to rejoice in Him and what He's given us. When my daughter had that little baby in her hand, I couldn't have gave her a million dollars that made her feel any better. I couldn't have bought it. It was priceless. That little baby to her was something that many couldn't buy. The church I wanted you and me to realize and understand tonight that what we have, money can't buy it. People can't give it to us. We can't possess it any other way. Only it's a gift that's come from God to us. We need to learn to rejoice in God and be glad. Amen. Praise I rejoice when I thought I found that 43 copper penny. It didn't take me long when I come back home. The people knew I had a 1943 copper penny. I wonder sometimes how many of our families and our friends and our associates we're so joyful over what we have. Having the Son of God. We share testimony with Him. And we share a life of, of joy before Him. That they can look at us and say, Man, they got what I want. Amen. They got what I'm searching for. They got what I'm longing for. They got what the world can't give me. I'm enjoying all the places of the world. I'm doing everything I want to do. I can buy anything I want to buy. I can go any place I want to go. But there's an emptiness down here. There's an emptiness down here. That none of that stuff's able to fill. It can only be filled by a gift. A gift that comes from God. A gift that comes from God. Hallelujah. There is none other. Not Muhammad. Not Buddha. Not Bill Gates. Not Obama. Don't come from no other source. Gotta come from Jesus. Gotta come from Jesus. Gotta come from Jesus. And I want you to know like you've got him tonight. But don't let it be like one of those valuable pieces that somebody's got into a house somewhere and don't even realize that they got it. Don't know the value of it. Realize the value of the gift that you have tonight in the Son of God Amen. and what's been given to you. Amen. Amen. 
Romans chapter 6 and verse 23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God, the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. You know, sometimes we get so tied up, so wrapped up in this life, in this present life, that we get our eyes off of the eternal life that God has to give us, that we have been able to possess through His precious Son, Jesus. We get so involved with this life and the things that it has to offer that we lose focus. We lose focus on what's before us. And what we have to gain. We get our eyes off of heaven. We get our eyes off of eternity to where we're going to spend it. And as long as we can have what we want right here, man, we're doing fine. And let me tell you something. We have something more to look forward to. Because in this precious gift that we possess, there's eternal life. There's eternal life. Something that money can't buy. Something that the world can't give you. Something that your mom and papa can't give you. Something that your children can't give you. Only Jesus. Only Jesus. Hallelujah. He's the only one. The precious gifts that we have. That we can possess. That he's given us. That only comes through his precious son. Hallelujah. The psalmist David kind of says it like this. Psalms 103. He says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name and forget not all His benefits. And some of those valuable, valuable things that you have been given in this life, there's benefits into it. It was something valuable. There's a benefit to owning it. There's a benefit to possessing it. Well, there's benefits in having Jesus into our life, and we don't need to forget those benefits because He's the one who forgiveth all of our iniquities, who healeth all of our diseases. Amen to God. Listen to me, church. I'm talking about the gift that slowly comes through Jesus. They're His, and He's given them to you and me as His children. And He don't want us to forget them. Forget not all His benefits. Who forgiveth all thy iniquities. Amen. Who heal all thy diseases. Who redeemeth thy life from destruction. And who crowned thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. I'm talking about a Jesus tonight. Who we have into our life. And we're not getting the full value out of the gift that we possess. We need a full value. Hallelujah. The full value that comes with it. I hate to think that somebody give me a bank account and give me a check and told me I couldn't write it. Amen. Yeah. Hey man, they put me a big bank account out there and give me the checkbook. So here's the check, but you can't write it. It wouldn't be useless to me. It'd be no good. I told a man one time he was wanting to buy a certain thing years ago. And I asked the man, I said, have you got that money? All right. He said, he looked at me real funny. Yeah, he said, I got the money to buy it. I said, where's that? He told me where it was at. To a certain place, to a bank, to a certain spot and stuff. And I said, uh, what you doing with it? He said, it's, it's just sitting there, he said. I said, what good is it doing you? You're wanting this thing so bad, you got the money to buy it with, you might as well have a box full of rocks out there somewhere. It's just it's serving just the same purpose. He looked at me like I was kind of stupid for a minute. And he said, you know, you're right. It wasn't a month later he went and spent almost about three times as much for something he didn't want it to replace the first thing that he wanted. <laughs> Listen to me. I'm trying to get a point that we can understand tonight. We have the possession to possess the things that we need in life. Amen to God. The things that God wants to give us, He's given us, is for you and me tonight to receive them. I don't believe we'll receive those things. I believe that people around the palace will begin to recognize it. I'll guarantee you. One of you men went and bought your wife some beautiful big diamond ring or something tomorrow. Before the week was out, everybody around Baton Rouge would know it. Yeah. 
Go buy more than a beautiful diamond, gold, Rolex watches. Go buy one of them nice, beautiful Jaguars or something like that. You know why? Because you're so happy in the gift that you got. You're ready to share with everybody. And you want them to know what you got. Well, listen to me. We got something that's priceless. Something that's priceless and there's only one of it. Amen. And we need to share it and show forth the joy of the Lord into our life that people can see and know that we got something more valuable than the material things have to offer. I've been known as a stone face most of my life because I've been so serious about everything. And every time I go to try to joke or say something funny, it seems like I make a fool out of myself and stick my foot in my mouth. But I'm still going to rejoice in the Lord. I'm going to be happy in Jesus. I don't care what the world thinks and what they say. I'm going to rejoice in the Lord. And God wants you and me to rejoice over the gift that He's given us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to go back and read a verse of Scripture in Matthew. 1 and 23. In the name of Jesus. See, there's no other name given under heaven whereby man must be saved. There's none other. He's got the right name. He's got the right name. He come from the right background. And there's only one of him. There's not two. Jesus even, even warns us about people saying, Yo, Christ is over here. Christ is over there. Don't run there. You don't got to go there. Listen to me. I'm not against great revivals. I'm not against outpourings of the Spirit of God. I believe they're real for the body. I believe Missoula Street revival was real. And I believe it set the pace for America. And it caused revival to go throughout America and throughout all the world, actually. I believe into it. There was a time and a place for God to move in that particular place. I believe the Brownsville revival was good. But men take those kind of things and make monuments out of them. Yeah. Amen to God. They put restrictions. This is God. Oh, God's here. Let me tell you something, church. God is here tonight. You don't got to be in Brownsville. You don't got to be in California on Azusa Street. God is here. Jesus is here. He's in your life. He's in our midst. And He wants to be conscious of that. He wants to be conscious of the priceless gift that we have tonight and the value of it and the importance of it into our lives. He's here. He's here. We need to act like he's here. Amen. 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 God, we need to worship like he's here. Amen. 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 It says, they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Into what kind of situation could you think of tonight that there would be a certain person that you would want to be with you? If you was in distress somewhere, Something had happened real bad. Who would pop to your mind that you would first want to be with you? I'll tell you a little story that I heard a long time ago. They took a little survey. And they asked a question. If you had to be put on a desolate island out in the middle of the sea, there's no communications or nothing, who would you want to be with you? Some begin to tell of some of their great heroes. Some maybe their mom or their dad or their husband or their wife or a fantasy person or something. And he asked the little boy. And he said, who would you want? He said, well, he said, I think I'd want the greatest boat builder in the world. <laughs> Come on, when you get in desperate situation, you want the one able to get you out. That little boy had all intentions if he was on that island. He wanted the person 
should you get him out of it. Hallelujah. And what God is saying in this verse of Scripture, His name shall be Emmanuel, which is interpreted God with us. Hallelujah. Such a valuable gift that we have with us. In whatever desperate situation that we might be in, God is with us. You know, I've never been a preacher to always paint or try to paint you a beautiful picture of a Christian walk was going to be all flowers, going to be all roses, without a few thorns being into it. I have been serving the Lord for close to 40 years, 38 years or so. I kind of lose track the older I get, the less I remember. Even though I fail, God knows I have. I don't stand before you tonight, church, as a proud preacher. I can tell you that right now. I'll say it before you as the preacher says I've never messed up, I've never made a mistake, I haven't done things that I shouldn't have done. I stand before you as a preacher covered in the blood. I stand before you as a preacher that has to come before God humbly. Need the help of God into my life to be able to make it through those thorny times when the roses was unfaded and died and all that's left is the thorns left to stick me. I've had to cry out, God, that you said you would be with me. Jesus said, I'll be with you even to the end of the world. God, God says, his name shall be Emmanuel, which is God with us. And I thank you because if he wasn't with me, I wouldn't be here tonight, I can tell you that. And I want you to know tonight that in those thorny, sticking times of your life, God is still with you. The red rose may have faded and may have died, may have lost its beauty, but still, amen to God, He's with you. In those kind of times that you go through in life, and you don't got to drop your head down, and you don't got to belly grub, you don't got to cry and complain to people, you don't got to let them know all the time the hurt that you're carrying. Sometimes you have people's carrying hurt into their life, and they're carrying burdens into their life, and yet they're wearing a smile that some people would never know unless they share it with somebody or unless God revealed it to them. There's people like that. And I thank God for it. I thank God that everybody don't got to spill their guts every time they come to church and tell how bad and how things is in their life and what they're going through and how, how such a heartache that they're having. I thank God for people that can hold their head up and are still rejoicing to the Lord for the things that they're suffering, for the things that they're going through. The Bible says in this life, you're going to have afflictions. Yes, we're going to have the hard times. We're going to have the troubles. We're going to have the persecutions. We're going to have the rejections. We're going to have the times we feel like God just let me die and let me go home and be with you. We're going to have those times in life. But in the midst of all those times, church, listen to me. God said, He's with us. The gift that God gives us. And that is God with us. He's with you in those times. This gift you don't got to take back to Walmart. Amen. This gift you don't got to go change colors because it, it wasn't the right color. This gift, you don't got to take it back because it didn't fit right. This is a universal gift. And it will fit every occasion and he will meet every need. Hallelujah. Regardless of what it might be. That's the importance of the gift that God has given us. And the value of it that you and I need to be so conscious of today. Hallelujah. John 14 and 11. I mean 14 and 16. Let me read this to you. Jesus said, I will pray the Father. And he will send you another comforter. Which is the Holy Ghost. And he will abide with you forever. You ever felt like maybe you've been among a hundred people or a thousand people and yet you felt alone? Jesus said, I'll pray the Father and he'll send you another comforter. 
which is the Holy Ghost, and he will abide with you forever. I'm talking about a comfort when there's not another friend around. How many times have you been into your life, in your lifetime, brother, that you would have loved for somebody that could just walked up to you, put their arms around you, hoped you, and held you, and let you know that they loved you and they was concerned about you. And that's what an old comfort kind of does with the natural. Take one of these old comforts, you call, the old bones is aching, you just wrap up into it. Jody asked me before I left, she said, do you want to take your blanket with you? <laughs> I got a certain little blanket that I get on the couch or I get into the recliner and I sit back in, that old fuzzy blanket, and then I just cover up into it, and it feels so good. <clears throat> That's what Jesus was saying. God's going to send you. He's going to send you a comfort, a comforter that will just wrap all around you. And soothe the aches and the pains and the cold and the hurt. Hallelujah. Talking about the sweet Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Sweet Holy Ghost. That Jesus and I'll pray the Father. He's going to sit. He's going to get you. He's going to get you. Brother Harry, I don't know about these modern day people. Try to get people filled with the Holy Ghost. Now I'm meddling, Brother Bob. <coughs> they get them down and say, Shandai, Sikai, Hikamakoli, or whatever. <laughs> you got it! You know, on the day of Pentecost, I never read nothing like that. I never read nothing like that, Brother Bobby, when Peter went down to Cornelius' house. Every time that the baptism of the Holy Ghost came, the Comforter came, nobody told him what to do or what to say. He came in like a mighty rushing wind on the day of Pentecost. Fill the house and everybody began to speak. Peter and James and John didn't have to tell them one word to say. When the Holy Ghost comes, the Bible says he's going to testify of Jesus. Hallelujah. And I don't got to tell you what to say. The Holy Ghost is going to tell you what to say. He'll bring a comfort into your heart. You know, people talk about being edified. You say not even pray in tongues in the church. You know, because it edifies you. Well, thank God it do. Because you know, sometimes I need to be edified and lifted up. Because nobody else is going to edify me or lift me up. So i got to pray in the Holy Ghost that He can do it. I'm talking about a gift. That I can't tell you how to say it. You can't buy it with money. And you don't receive it by joining the church. It's a gift. It's a gift. Jesus also said this. In John 14 and 27. He says peace. I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. None as the world giveth, give I unto you. Listen to this. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. You know, Jesus is not like, I'll say me. He never just spoke words to be speaking of. You know, sometimes I may, may just say something to be saying it. Because I ain't got nothing else to say. But Jesus don't, never did do that. If he said something, he always give a reason why he said it. And this scripture could kind of go backwards and we might be able to understand it a little bit better. If he would have said more like this, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. He said, because I give you peace. 
That's what he's saying. The reason why we don't have to let our hearts be troubled because he gives us peace. Not the kind of peace that the world gives, but he gives us his kind of peace. In your troubled heart, in your troubled mind, When there's a turmoil going on, and it's so troubled, and it's so disturbed, you don't know which way to go, and you try to think it out, you try to reason it out, and the more you try to think it out, and the more you try to reason it out, the more confused it begins to begin. The more complicated it begins to get. I'm trying to watch the time. I feel like it's still got to go on. You ever read a scripture? And when you read the scripture, you didn't quite understand it. And it kind of bum fuzzled you. And you start trying to search. You start trying to read. You start trying to dig it out. You try to search here. You try to search there. And you try to find out what it is. And the more you search, the more complicated the scripture gets. Because the more deeper it gets, and the more different things begin to light begin to shine onto it, and the more confused you actually begin to get. And when you get over here, you then forgot why you started out over here in the beginning to know what you was reading or what you was trying to figure out. Because meantime you got here, the thing has then changed so onto you, you got lost from what it was up here. Bobby shake me said, Yeah, preachers know well what I'm talking about, I can guarantee you. But listen to me. That's the way it is into the world we live into. Into the things of our everyday life that God's concerned about. We begin to try to reason out. And we begin to try to work this out. And we try to add this to it. And we try to change this. And we try to do something else over here to make it work. Make it different. And we done for God. And we don't even know why we started out in the first beginning. Our mind becomes so confused into it. But Jesus is saying, don't let your heart get like that. Don't let it get trouble. And don't be afraid. I'm going to take care of it. Just trust me and accept the gift that I've given you. I'm going to give you peace in this situation and you don't got to fight with it no longer. You don't got to toil with it. You don't got to think about it. You don't got to try to reason it out. Just accept the peace that I give you to it. Christmas gift. Christmas gift that came from God. Precious little son Born into a world. God was not found into his mouth. He's got all the qualifications, church. Listen to me. He's got all the background. Hallelujah. He's got the right name. He's got the right quality. And he's definitely the right quantity. Hallelujah. Listen to me. When he was brought before Pilate, they were bringing all kinds of accusations against him. Wasn't the crucified. You know what he said? I find no fault. I find no fault in this man. Yeah. Really, he's got a church. He's got it. Yeah. He's got it. And God loved us so much. He did something that no, none of us, I don't think, would have dared to do. When he sent me from heaven as a little baby, knowing what he was going to go through, knowing the things he was going to suffer, he was going to go to the cross for the redemption of all mankind. I don't think God ever regretted it. I don't think Jesus ever regretted it. I believe Jesus endured the suffering, the things that he went through, never thought nothing of it, realizing the reward that was going to come from it. That there was going to be countless numbers of souls that was going to be saved, that was going to be redeemed, their life from destruction, and that they could be able to inherit the eternal life that God first ordained for man to have. So if you're troubled tonight, 
You've got the gift. You don't have to be troubled any longer. If you're in sorrow, you've got the comforter tonight. He came, the comforter. He came to give you peace. Jesus also said this in Matthew 11 and 28. He said, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. And he says, I'll give you rest. Come unto me. He's giving you an invitation tonight to come to him. He says, you can come to me when you can't go nowhere else. You can't find it in no other place. He says, come to me, and I'll give you rest. You know, I believe that there are a lot of true Christians that love the Lord. They want to serve Him with all their heart. But as years go by, The labor, the work, and the toil. Somehow or the other, we allow it to build up on us. We allow it to kind of stack up on our shoulders. We allow it to stack up in our minds and in our spirit. And it seems like we become restless. We really can't find the spiritual rest that we need to be renewed, and to be restored. Jesus is saying, all of you Christians that have labored and you've torn and the load has become so heavy, you can't go on anymore to your own strength. What he's saying is, come to me. Come on to me. And I'll give you rest. A spiritual rest. That you can be renewed. That you can be strengthened. There's a message that the Lord gave me here a couple of years ago about the eagle. And I can't, I'm not going to go into it all tonight. But it talks about the eagle. How their strength is renewed. There is a certain place. I'm going to say this. I'm going to try to close with the help of the grace of God. There's a certain time into an eagle's life. Did they become a certain age? That they get to the place that they're weak and they're faint. And they can do one or two things. They can either stop and they can give up and the younger eagles will feed them and take care of them and just let them lay around into the treetop somewhere. Or they can determine into their mind and they can say, no, I'm going to do what it takes to restore me. An eagle can actually restore their health, can restore their life and renew it. You got to go to a certain height, and you got to go to a certain place. I'm not going to go through all the details, and there's a certain procedure that you got to go through. But when you read it and you identify it with the Word of God, Brother Bobby, it lines up to you and me as children of God with things we have to do and the things we have to have into our life to be renewed and get that strength back that we have. And when they go through that process, they're able to leave that place and they're able to flop their wings and fly just like a brand new young eagle. Well, listen to me, all saints of God. God loves you tonight, and He's concerned concerned about you and the heavy load the things that you've been carrying. It seems like it's weighted you down and pressed you down that you can't soar like the eagle. Amen. And God, God says, come on to me, Jesus said, and I'll give you rest. He'll give you that spiritual rest that will strengthen you and renew you tonight. Yeah. Hallelujah. Musicians, would you come to the platform? This is something I can't give you. This is something your husband or your wife can't give you. Your mom and your daddy can't give you. Your children can't give you. This God gives you. This God gives you. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Would you bow your head with the church for just a minute?
Hila raba wa sata raba wa shandara kura raba sata. Hila raba wa sata raba wa kiti ki shola raba haya. Oh, la raba wa sandara raba wa kita ka shi lo raba wa hata. Oh, ta raba wa shandara raba wa sata raba wa kiti ki shola raba wa haya. Oh, God. God, help us tonight. Help us tonight, God. Help us tonight to realize, to be very conscious of what we have in Jesus. God, would you minister to your people tonight? Lord, as we wait, we linger in your presence. Father, I've preach the word that I felt like you gave me to preach. I've delivered my soul and said all that I feel like you gave me to say. And I pray right now, God, that your Holy Spirit would reach out to the people that you love to the people that Jesus came for, for the people that Jesus died for. Oh God, would you minister to them tonight. Lord, let them realize the value of their salvation. The value of serving Jesus. Christ that had to be paid for it for a moment. Yes. God, they would cherish it all our heart tonight. And then find that place tonight, Lord, in you. That whatever their need might be, Almighty God, that they receive it. Because their need comes from you. The supply of their need, Lord, comes from you. And I pray right now that you minister to them. And God did receive it. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I wonder tonight, would you just like to get up from where you're sitting? Just make your way down to this altar. And make your request known to the Lord. Yes. He knows it already. But he says you have not because you ask not. Do you really want to draw closer to God? Do you really want to be able to value the priceless possession that God has given you? Do you want to draw closer to him tonight? be able to show forth the praises of God in your life before your family and before your friends. Amen. That they can see the joy of the Lord into your heart because He's comforted you. And because He's given you peace. And because He's given you rest for your weary soul.